Cans today. Cheers, Ross. It's a it's a wine oh, bottle. Let's of... try that again. Oh, it's also <laughs> sounded crap. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> Cheers, folks. This is Humber Dojo Podcast. This is Rue and Ross, and we've got our wee growlers of Peroni, and we're back in the saddle, man. Back again. <laughs> Give you some good content. <laughs> yeah, it's been a fucking minute, you might say. It's been a while. You're a long time waiting, folks, and fair play to you. If you're listening to this, you've stuck with us. I wouldn't stick with us. Cheers, Linda. <laughs> um, Shout out to Linda. Yeah. As uh, always. Well, it's been it's been a manic, a manic wee time. A rough, rough start to the second, to the, to the, to the, the year for me. When was the last uh, time we did a podcast? Ages ago. Like February? Yeah, and I think from February, I, I think, I, like... Some personal stuff, mm-hmm. and I think coming to the end of our tether with mm-hmm. our own karate stuff going on, I think we were we couldn't be arsed with anything or anybody. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> man. We've been going through a lot. Ross has been dealing with some uh, really heavy shit, and I've been busy. I was rehearsing a show, and I'd been busy mm. with a few other projects. And... Might, uh, can I just say, what a show? Rue Ru put on um, a three person show mm-hmm. with um, yourself, mm-hmm. your sister Molly and Neve and Neve mm-hmm. um, and Molly and Neve are professional they sure are man, they're the uh, real ac- deal actors and uh, Rue could be professional in my opinion but he obviously is a professional karateka first <laughs> well I was a professional actor <laughs> once yeah. upon a time um, and, and he put on a fantastic show which uh, a mesh together the the modern and the fantastical worlds yeah. and and mashed together in a lovely musical and it was it was beautiful. Thanks, man. It's very I'm good. Glad you liked it. Yeah, very it was good. great. Was very impressed. We had a we had a watch party in the dojo because obviously it, I mean it was a play, it was a musical, but there's no such thing as putting a play on for a live audience at the moment. So it was pre-recorded down in Galway and then it was streamed. And we had a little watch party in the dojo. It was really nice. I was cringing at myself half the time though, just because it's so hard to watch yourself. But everybody was very nice about it. Yeah, and, and uh, I think uh, everyone was very impressed because we know we, you know, we know you can sing, but we've never really seen you act hmm. before. It was a different, different sort of side of the t- the artsy talent that you've got, and uh, it was very good, very nice. Thanks, man. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but yeah, so that's what we've been busy with. I've been, you know, singing, acting, and dancing. And uh, I've been a moody, moody ballback. <laughs> <laughs> brooding, brooding away. Everybody goes through a moody phase sometimes, <laughs> yeah, you, you know? Sometimes. Um, Shit happens. So, yeah. What you gonna do? Yeah. And you know what? We don't put ourselves under massive pressure, do we, Ross? If no. we don't feel like doing it, no, we don't do it. No, exactly. <laughs> if, and that's the one thing that's been consistent through my whole life. Listen, if it's not, listen, if I'm not up to it, I'm not up to it. <laughs> so we can guarantee you folks, if you're listening to us, we're having a good time. Yeah. We're, in a we're, good, never, we're never faking it. We're in a good space. We never, <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we don't put it on. <laughs> mm. Sorry, chewing loudly on the air. I'll stop that in one moment. But I've noticed, I'm sitting across and I've just noticed your hands, man. Your hands, you've got some, you've got some, some grime on your I've your got knuckles. farmer's hands right now you've got man. you've got some some dirt under the fingernails yeah, you man. must be doing some outdoor training are you, <sighs> you, Did, you some is it that training? obvious <laughs> <laughs> right on the the two punching knuckles my hand what were you yeah. doing were you, <laughs> I must have been doing push you, ups on the dirt were you chopping trees or <laughs> with your fists <laughs> or what, what have you been up to man we're karate outdoors is on man for the last yeah. few weeks we've been teaching yeah. all our kids classes outdoors in the sunshine in the beautiful parks and green spaces that South Dublin has to offer. And in the street and the hail and the <laughs> yeah. rain and the winds. That <laughs> Irish summertime has to offer. <laughs> yeah, man, it's been great. Uh, yeah, I've been getting down and dirty, man. I've got my hands are covered in muck right now because we just came from Ross's competition class. You've got dirt on your trackies. I was doing unsu in the mud today. That's what I was doing. <laughs> but unsu in the mud. 
I never, you know, that's something I never teach in soon, and I, and I know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate it so much. Really? Oh man, you still hate it? I still hate it. Yeah. I, I thought I just, you were going to try and get it. Just, it. I think I, I was going. to, That's just my attempt. This is mm. me trying. I think what better way than to to force myself to do it than promise to teach it to people, mm. and and that's it. I'm, I'm now under oath of I will teach you guys this kata, and you will know it inside and out. Um, and that will force me to to work at it and mm-hmm. and break it down myself in my head, and that's how that's how these cats tend to stick and and sort of become ingrained with me. It's through the teaching, so mm-hmm. that's the goal. That's the goal. Teach it well, and then you can do it well. I think. But yeah, um, teaching outside though. Hmm. Back to a bit of contact, man. We had the competition class on today. Contact was allowed back at the the beginning of May. Mm-hmm. Um, Physical contact. Yeah, so we just started to, to smack the shit out of each other now. It hitting. was a bit strange, actually. I'm like, I'm used to contact training with you guys, but mm-hmm. I went down to your competition class today. And as soon as I was, a, you know, in a class with a bunch of people I don't normally hit, and I was allowed to hit them, and I felt really shy. Yeah? I didn't want to... I didn't want to get stuck in, you know? I think I need to ease myself into it. Speaking of getting stuck in... Oh my goodness, here's... Georgia! Punch. Georgia! <laughs> talking about, there, talking Georgia. about punching people. I know. Talking about... The heavy, the heavy hitter in the dojo. <laughs> Georgia! Hi, guys. Georgia, so, so for those of you who don't know, Georgia is a, a long, long time student here at the dojo. One of the, the senior grades. Mm-hmm. Um, has recently... Um, Moved down to Galway, mm-hmm. across the Galway, studying at university there, but still um, comes up from time to time to train and stuff. Still loyal to the end, Georgia. How are you doing, Georgia? <laughs> I'm good. How did no. you How did you find getting to punch people today? Um, it was a bit like difficult. I don't know. It kind of your brain, like, and your body just kind of <laughs> you lose. <laughs> oh, you got a bit of podcast no, it, shyness here, it folks. Didn't, it didn't seem. Now, hang on. This is pure. This is pure uh, fake shyness. I don't buy this. No. And she's saying, "Oh, it was a bit like I was just saying before you walked in the door that I was a bit shy about hitting people today. You were battering the shy guy, <laughs> Georgia. You kicked me in the head like kind of hard about ten times. Oh, I, I wasn't shy about hitting people. I was being shy of getting hit." Oh, <laughs> hang on! This is also bullshit. Because she was standing there, and we were doing a drill, and I was going Kazami Gaku Uramawash, and she was like, "Oh, but that Gaku just just hit stick it and hit me hard because I need the abs training." And I was like, "Okay," <laughs> I started battering her. That's... Stop lying to our podcast audience, George. Great start, great start. And I think that is the best way to describe George. <laughs> just just punch me and let me punch you. Come on. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, it's good to be back outside. It's good to be doing some contact training. Um, I find what what do you think the biggest sort of bad habit that's been found from the kids? Do you think coming back to outdoor training? Have you noticed anything that's that sticks out? Is oh Christ, I can't, like you can't can't fix this on Zoom kind of thing. Well, the obvious one is kata, isn't it? They've yeah. all forgotten their kata. Yeah. Um, kata on Zoom's a challenge. Eh? I. I st- I would only bother very rarely trying to teach kata. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I was and still trying to get them to do it, like once, once every couple of like, because you'd have the same kids every every day. Mm-hmm. So once a week, I'd be like, okay, let's do let's do a kata. Let's do so. I was doing your it your, your body language right now, talking about doing a kata. Oh, so you've got your head in your hands. And I'm sitting on a rubbing my head. I'm going, oh Jesus, slog. Is this just thinking about Zoom? It's no, it's no, because Zoom. I got used to Zoom eventually, and it, it, what it was is, is teaching kids cat on Zoom. Okay. Because you're doing the cat backwards, mm, which I got pretty good at, to be fair. I can do all the cat backwards. <laughs> so good, <laughs> so good. You do the backwards all the time. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Um, and also, I'd done the first half of He and Yon dance so many times, and I'd always stop there mm. because after the first kiai, it's like. Oh, we've got the angles now, and you've got the turn and the kaki waki game back stance. I wouldn't ever bother going past the first ki eye, so I actually <laughs> forgot the second half of the Yondan for a while. Oh my god! You, it's, <laughs> it's hard to watch them though, because you you can't really do it. You know, you kind of have like a sense when people are around you, yeah. but I mean, no, they can't really watch them properly. No, and then by themselves in their living room, and unless they all, they already were good at their kata before lockdown, they they really struggled. But mm-hmm. kata would be the big one. I find that everyone's stances have gotten. A lot shorter. Mm. Adults and because they have less space. They had less space, oh. and now they're back to space. 
but they're still doing the short stances in the living room. Living room dachi. Living <laughs> room dachi. <laughs> living room dachi. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know? Uh, right. Yeah, stances have gone to hell. I didn't have a look at Georgia's stance today. It's, it's laziness as well. Well, you didn't do much Zoom training, did you? <laughs> I tried. I, I went through phases of going every day hmm. and then take a month off to, re- to heal. And then come to back heal, to- like to heal your soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was wrong with Zoom training? Um, I think it was just, it was different for me because like I was so far away and I don't know, it just made me think of home a lot, kind mm. of. Like I, d- I didn't really feel homesick, but it was just a bit weird kind of moving out but then being in Dublin basically with the same people on Zoom it was just really weird I think I get it yeah. because it was probably because Georgia trains you know before lockdown Georgia was in the dojo nearly every day yeah. like uh, like Caitlin and, and a handful of others who trained who were really really committed to training and I know I could barely handle the Zoom training I yeah. did it at the start because we had to but um, fuck I'd never go back to it now I wouldn't bother I don't care if it was you or Scott who teaching yeah. No way. I think, uh, yeah, only uh, like again, we we again we have to. But I remember thinking when we we're doing morning training on Zoom, mm-hmm. the first lockdown, mm-hmm. the super strict one, where you went yeah, out yeah, to leave yeah. your house, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was lucky enough because that was like what a five k radius you weren't allowed to leave, was it? Yeah, five k, which yeah. is like nothing. So, but I live across the road from the dojo, so I was still coming in here to train, you know. So I had the space and stuff, and I remember having the. Uh, just before we had the Zoom set up, so it was just my phone mm-hmm. on a stand, and I had the phone up, and I was trying to do the training, and I literally thought I would be better off turning this off and just doing my own thing. Yeah, like, yeah. and and that's what I was saying. That's with, and that's not to say we don't appreciate the people at that first lockdown getting up and training with us, and Scott trying to do the best. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Remember class. Scott piss and sweat in his little spare room upstairs in his house a million degrees remember teaching, teaching like, Unsu in the box room I know, fair like, play to him man it was amazing I, 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 and he was doing and it was uh, super impressive to see his dedication and stuff shine yeah, through there but I remember awesome. me who loves a bit of training more than most was still going yummy yeah, with this man this <laughs> not for me so fair play guys if you were oh, if you've been on any of these listening been on our courses and trained in our classes. The people that train with—I know the people that train with me on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I said it to them on the last class, but I, I man, couldn't thank you all enough because that was that was really just kept us going. Yeah. yeah, we complain about it, but if there were only one or two students showing up for every class, like that's hard. That's tough. And then when you've got twelve little white belts yeah. or twelve whoever belts tuned in, it gives you energy. Even if yeah. it is Zoom, you're like, woohoo, let's do yeah. it. Exactly. It it was cool, like going on it though, and seeing like, I like I could go like a month later and be the same people there, and it just made it, like, I don't know, like a few th- warm inside. Yeah, <laughs> it was quite nice, and yeah. it it kind of motivates other people, I think, as well. It was cool because we got to uh, a lot of people from outside our usual training pool as well, and we got to see get a glimpse into. You know, the, and the, some of them sent some, us like, like a quarterly <laughs> quarterly shipments of beer <laughs> and stroop waffles. <laughs> beer and strip, beer and strip waffles. I can't go wrong. Yeah, yeah we got some nice presents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's excellent. Mm. But being outside is miles better. Oh, I've been it's... saying, I've been like, uh, I've been cycling all around Dublin again. I've been, I've had much less free time during the Zoom training days. I had. Like three quarters of my day free to do absolutely nothing with. I spent a lot of time making, you know, uh, working on recordings and music stuff and the show. But anyway, now that I'm cycling all over the place and meeting my students in person, I wouldn't even go back to Zoom if it was pissing raining. I did it one time. One time Mm. it was raining quite badly and I did my Zoom classes and I thought I would actually rather cycle down there in the rain just to see if one or two people turned up and go, oh, sorry guys, the rain is too bad, go home. I would yeah. rather do that than yeah. sit at home and turn on that fucking Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I've been quite lucky. Like I got caught in the rain on uh, out in Irish town where there was no shelter or anything one time, but just toughed it out. And it was actually yeah, it was fine. It was fine. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the kids get a little bit like, Sensei, it's raining." It's like I know, it's really raining. <laughs> I know. But man, I, the other, the... I take points away if they mention the rain. Oh, yeah. oh, and one kid was like, uh, "Sensei, there's water falling from the sky," and I was like, "No, nope, minus five points. Sorry, you're not getting away with that." 
<laughs> don't mention the wall. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, but like I, one thing like that hit me, like it happened on a uh, last last Saturday, mm-hmm. uh, and I was training, and there was a new there's a new kid in my Saturday beginners class, and he's the cutest little wee kid ever. What's um, his name? His name is Alexander Gustafsson. After Oof. the the UFC, oh, holy shit, like, really? no yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, God. like the exact same thing. So it's, it's pretty cool. But hilariously, he is the polar opposite. He is teeny tiny <laughs> <laughs> compared to the massive Viking that fights the UFC. He's teeny, 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 tiny. But he, we we're finishing training, and it was his second class. I think his second time there. And he and I was sitting down after that class, you know, um, and and he comes up to me and he goes, "Sensei, I love you," and give me a wee hug. And I was just like, oh, rrr, rrr. <laughs> back in the outdoor class with the waves, you can't repeat it. <laughs> you know, just, my, my mood lifted uh, just being being in the outdoor class. Now, none of my students have told me they love me, but <laughs> just being outside. <laughs> Because you don't, you, you don't lend them away with nonsense. Like I I'm <laughs> yeah. too soft on them. I, so. I'm I'm getting a bit better now. I'm a bit less strict as time goes on. I am, I am learning. But um, what was I saying? Uh, ju- I think it's the vitamin D, and just the interpersonal. Uh, VD. What, the the V. The vitamin D, what's, what do you call it? Interpersonal, whatever interaction with other human beings, yeah. <laughs> even if they are annoying little children. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's great. I would never have known that you guys really did not like Zoom though. Like every time we come on, like you guys are always in good mood. It's because we're professional. Yeah. Professional. But uh, you kept it up that long. Like, it's funny, like, because you know the wee bit, like, where, where you guys are maybe in the waiting room for the <laughs> meeting to go off. <laughs> yeah. uh, during that t- time, there's a lot of effing and blending. Uh, 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 don't want to do it. Uh, uh, hate Zoom. Lockdown. So bad. Uh, uh. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you all. So excited. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, Ross, I don't want to get up. I don't want to do it. And he's like, You have to get up and do a warm up, man. You have to do the warm up. <laughs> and then halfway through the warm up, I start feeling better. I get yeah. into it. Once you get going, it's just like anything else. When yeah. you're like, it's like tra- like training. Like sometimes in training, like, you just can't be asked. You just don't want to do it, and then you just decide, I'm just gonna, just gonna train. That's it. Just go on with it, and then five minutes in, you're grand. Mm-hmm. You know, you remember. Oh, I actually love this, and it's and it's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think all the time. Like today, the thought of of teaching from eleven till four thirty today was not the best like that, that did not sound sort of a uh, appealing because you've just started your competition class up again yeah so that's and a long like, shift man. it's a long shift mm. and it was like and that was like ugh, I, I, that's, that's a lot ugh, it's gonna be such a, a tough day it's gonna be a crap day but it flew by like it mm. literally flew by i mm. love every second of it i love it love the kids love the adults love everyone it's just great um yeah, I can't complain. Now we're back outside. Yeah. It just feels great. I think everyone's so happy all the time. Everyone like, is all happy. the time. It's everyone really cool. Happy. Yeah, it's true. Even it's the true. parents and everything. Just They're all there having the crack. Kids, at the kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's it's great. I love it. Um, but if you were to just a little fun exercise, if you were to have, because the zoom, I think, is the worst part is behind us now. I think. Mm-hmm. Touch all the wood in the dojo. <laughs> yeah, we're not back on Zoom anytime soon, to the to the extent that we are. The odd Zoom class to keep just to keep just keep in touch with the people who have supported us yeah, through that lockdown. So I think I know yeah. that Scott says he wants to keep doing his classes. I would, but I don't have the data plan to be able to have my phone running for for four hours a a week nonstop outside. Maybe when we're back inside, I'll turn the Zoom back on um, and use the Dojo Wi-Fi grand. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there was a best and worst Zoom memory, best and worst Zoom moment, what would it be? Well, I just thought of a funny one off the top of my head, so I'm gonna. It might not be, might not be the best ever, but um, just because it was so long, you know, that the we spent like f- nearly we spent I, four and a half months on Zoom this year. Just to clarify, it doesn't, doesn't have to be just you teaching. It can be you training. Oh. In someone else's class or or whatever. Okay, no, this is just a moment I had with one of my students. You know Boris? Oh, yeah, Boris. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Boris trains every day now. Yeah, I know. He every trains day. two hours on a Saturday. Yeah. It's unreal. Amazing. Um, Boris is great. <laughs> and uh, whenever, what, I start my Saturday, I used to start my Saturday Zoom classes at 10 in the morning. Mm. Um, and Boris was always on there first thing. And I'd be finishing my coffee as I turn on the Zoom. So I'm sipping out of my cup. And I have a cup that was bought 
by a friend of mine, and it says the boss on it. <laughs> okay, um, and she bought a cup for another friend of mine that said the real boss. So it's like a, yeah. uh, it's like a married Rejo- couples kind of, <laughs> kind of yeah. mug set. Anyway, so mine says the boss, and I was sipping away out of my cup, saying, "I'm like, look, guys." My cup says the boss. That means you have to do what I say or whatever. Stupid jokes for the start of Zoom class. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the boss. That's right. Finishing my coffee. And then next week, Saturday morning, Boris had a bigger mug <laughs> with the boss written on it in bigger font. And every time I lifted my cup for a sip, he lifted his cup for a sip. And I was like, where did you get that? And he remembered. He was like, Saturday morning. Yeah. Since he's going to have his boss cup. Oh. That's great. That's great. You should ask him, have you heard, his, have you heard Boris's Velociraptor impression? <laughs> no. He is mad for the Velociraptors. Is it like the Jurassic Park one? Like, no, gur, gur. He does it all, man. Really? He does baby ones, grown-up ones. He does the run. He can no run. Way. Like, man, it's cool. So, it, like, yeah, that's his thing. So, for one of the warm-ups where the kids, if I'm in a, a particularly jolly mood, I know the kids won't mess about, I do the, the animal warm-up, mm-hmm. where I would start describing an animal, and they have to try and guess what animal I'm thinking mm-hmm. of, and then run like that animal up and down to warm up that's a great little that's fun genius. fun mm-hmm. exercise for them mm-hmm. so you know and then one of like for that's like okay I'm thinking of, it, of an animal that doesn't exist anymore so it's extinct and they're like oh it's a dinosaur and they start and they start thinking dinosaur names mm-hmm. and they have to wait till I start and it's like and I'm like oh okay it was, it was, in, the, it was in Jurassic Park now it's in Jurassic Park and it's like okay and it's like oh, and, and you can start describing and it's got the, it's got a big claw on it's foot and it, and it runs really fast and it's super smart and, and, and then oh, the, the Boris is always like it's a velociraptor yeah yeah and he, off he goes <laughs> <laughs> like a velociraptor and making these noises and it's amazing like it's so cool you need to check Boris's velociraptor I'm going to definitely ask him to do it for yeah. me and if any of you guys teaching kids animal warm up it's a good one it's a good one to do Oh, but I forgot about my Zoom adventures. Zoom adventures? (laughs) But you know, what was terrible was when I lost it. Well, just in case people haven't listened to the podcast where I talked about my Zoom adventures before. I started doing... I started doing karate through storytelling on Amazing. Zoom. Amazing. I started doing like a like a, a live adventure with the kids, and they had to do their techniques to like get to the next level. So there was break out of karate prison. There was karate pirate ship. There was karate alien spaceship. There was all, all this kinds of stuff. But I lost the mojo for it after about four weeks. Oh really? I I'd, I'd thought up of a See, bunch of I'd done tiring, like, yeah. yeah. I'd done like seven or eight or nine different adventures. I did karate jungle and I repeated some of them sometimes with different bits and pieces. And then some kids would love a particular one like the pirate ship and they asked me to do it again and again. But when I lost I just really, really lost the will to do them and they were always asking for it and I was like, no, no, no adventure oh, yeah. today, guys. Oh. We're just going to do it. basics. <laughs> I'd say it's, it's, really it's tough to, to keep that, that level of uh, excitement and enthusiasm and energy up because, yeah, it's, it's like I say, like I say, we try and, we try and put on the brief and stuff, but mm-hmm. it, it, it was really tough going the Zoom. Uh, training it was really tough it was great and it came across well but it must have been some kind of manic phase because um, <laughs> because I just no did, other didn't want to do it anymore after a while <laughs> so that was your best what was the worst what was the worst well, that, I think that's the worst that's the worst yeah so like, that's that. why I was going to say because uh, the best was the funny cup story whatever but the worst was just feeling like I was letting them down when I didn't have the energy when I didn't have the enthusiasm to give them what they were to what they, what they really wanted they really yeah. wanted to have fun um, and the best you can do for a kid when they're relegated to doing karate through a fucking computer screen is let them have a bit of crack while they're doing it Yeah. and I just couldn't bring myself to do it sometimes no because it was a lot of energy uh, it's a shame it's a shame man that's my worst yeah mm-hmm. what was your best and worst um, I think my best is really silly. Oh yeah, it's a silly one, but I every time I think about it, I smile. Like I do, like I, I and I was talking to, hey, I was in the car with hey, Scott Sainz the other day, and I was, and we were talking about it, and I started, we both started giggling about it. Remit, like so, we had done a lot of courses mm-hmm. on Zoom, and we had guest instructors on over Zoom. Yeah, I remember. Um, Oh, Takenoshita. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember? And it was him just built, like, being able to, something so joyous about his energy. Because I, I trained with him in Japan. Mm-hmm. He's a Japanese instructor, um, and 
uh, while we were in Tokyo, 2019, 18, yeah, it was, something like no, that. No, it was 2020. It was early 2020. It was just before the pandemic. It was like January 2020. No, 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 no. Scott was there. Oh, you didn't go that time. I was oh, sorry. Before. Okay, so 2019. Yeah, I was here before. Yeah, 2019. And, um, and he, so he was teaching for us on, on, online and I taught, uh, I'd trained with him in Japan and I knew he was very, he had a very good kumite sort of presence about him um, and, and was very fast and energetic. Mm-hmm. And he was doing his class and he was doing his bits and bobs and he says, okay, wait, like, look at me and react to when I go and when he punches you, when, when I throw Kazami Yaku, you have to block counter. Mm-hmm. Like, and, that, mm-hmm. and we done that and we done it, we done it, we done it. Oh, and I remember, he, and this, yeah. remember that he'd done a fake out. Yeah, yeah. Which was yeah, the yeah, funniest yeah, yeah. thing ever. So he it went, great. It, so he went Kazami Yaku about maybe five or seven, five to seven times. And he, and then he stood up. And we all kind of switched off, and then he went, Whoa! And, he, yeah. and he jumped in and did another one. And I, I just remember nearly putting my fist through the fucking laptop screen, like, Wah! Fucking, to try and to try again. It was hilarious. It was I remember the, I remember it was me, you, Scott, and I think EG was there yeah, as well. Yeah. And then four of us were pissing ourselves laughing, <laughs> going, That's amazing to get that kind of reaction he even over said, Zoom. Oh, yame. Yeah, he said, even went like, Yummy. Yame. And then, What's up? <laughs> that is my favourite Zoom moment. It has to be like that was a uh, class. That was very good. That was really good. Um, and, and I think the worst part, um, and I'll be nice and I won't name any names, but the worst Ooh. part has to be um, when we have people and the Zoom class becomes a, a discussion rather than training. Where it starts off, we were training and it's going in the right way, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, you're getting a sweat on, and then it suddenly stops, and we end up talking about it. You mean doing the a couple of that. yeah, and yeah. we do, and we end up doing a couple of reps, then we talk, mm-hmm. doing a couple of reps, and we talk. Oh well, listen more or less, mm-hmm. more or less, and it becomes too explainy, too much analysing and talking about the nuts and bolts rather than just let's just get some some reps in and actually mm-hmm. do it. Um, that's for for me on Zoom, uh, like in in person where you can actually have the vibe of the class and, and have that discussion and and it's a bit freer, like it's easier to ask questions because you're not like talking, like you ha- you don't have to have a microphone or the green yeah, box or something yeah. like that. So when you're in person, that's a bit easier to do. Mm-hmm. But on Zoom, I just found it really boring. Like mm-hmm. I just found it very, it just, it was such, there's such a disconnect that to try and have that kind of intellectual sort of seminar, mm-hmm. which are great and when they're, and, and, they, and I do like them, but on Zoom it just, there was a level of separation there that just made it impossible for me to enjoy it, really. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. When you're actually standing around and the instructor is standing in the middle of the circle and they're showing and you they've the got, thing. And you're, you're, yeah. cap, you're, you're captivated by yeah. what they're talking about. Whereas on the TV screen and they're talking about it and then there's like a whole bunch of other people on there and yeah, it yeah. just didn't, didn't I work. think if you're teaching over Zoom, you have to get people to move. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you enjoy the, like, the courses that you do or do you do them because you have to? Oh, no, I love them. Oh, we, oh, we love them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? We're mad about cry, so yeah. But even on, <laughs> even on Zoom, <laughs> well, uh, you know, even well, the we say, get to do it together. You yeah, oh, that, yeah, that's the thing. If we were by ourselves, no, I probably wouldn't. No, um, and that would be regardless of who's teaching or like, because because yeah, even training in the mornings with with uh, with uh, Scott Sensei, like yeah, uh, the motivation was just plummeting day by day, and I was going, oh my god, this like I'd rather to the point where I would stay behind an extra hour in the dojo and just train because oh, really? yeah, 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 I would yeah. just do my own thing like. Um, yeah, it, it was a bit mad at the start. But every time we do a Saturday seminar, we're here in the dojo with Scott, yeah. and he's teaching to the camera, and Ross and I are putting in reps in the yeah. background. And... Just, well, and while he's talking and checking me on stuff, we're still doing yeah. up yeah. and down reps. Whereas when there's someone teaching, we don't want to just do our own thing while they're talking, so mm-hmm. we're, we're giving them our attention, and that's when it can sometimes get a bit, you know, mm-hmm. tough. Do you, do you feel weird that many people watching you guys? Like, do you feel like if you mess up, do you get a bit embarrassed? Like, I'm always way in the back. Yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm used to <laughs> teaching on seminars and stuff now. Like, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, I'm used to performing. <laughs> extremely large audiences. <laughs> <laughs> Professionals. Professionals is the word. Um, but yeah, like, like, but how do you think, like, so the Zoom thing, like, I guess Scott since he's been putting up his classes. Um, mm-hmm. He's got Patreon going. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Check that out, by the way. It's a uh, 
I can't remember. Home of those crafting, uh, Patreon. <laughs> no, it's gov not. Or something. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I can't remember. I think it's uh, training on. Oh, our, uh, go to hdki.org and there's a. a doesn't matter. Anyway, just search. <laughs> <laughs> he's putting classes up there uh, on his page. On he's putting class. He's putting more clips than ever out there uh-huh. on the interweb. And uh, what do you think of the the state of karate, specifically karate, on the internet? Like, what what do you think? I mean, there's more of it now than ever. Yeah. Every Joe Soap and Tom Dick and Harry is putting up clips. Yeah. And except me. <laughs> you still haven't posted anything. It <laughs> never occurs to me. Like when I'm in the middle of doing something, they're going, oh, "You should film this." I'm, I'm always just in you're the. Too, you're pure Winnie the Pooh man. You're just always li- living in the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 uh, there's no. There's no. Oh, w- would you not think think ahead a little bit? Nope. <laughs> think right here now. Yeah. No, I need to start doing that, man. I just need to get get on it. Just let's start off with a few little bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Some people have kind of faded away, and some people have ramped up. And Scott is posting more content than ever, and there's other people posting more content than ever. Uh, Richard Amos was kind of posting a lot of stuff early on, and I think he's kind of faded away now. Or has he? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Really he was on Cry at home the other day, looking. Oh, was he? Looking quite sharp. I yeah, if I don't I say so myself. He, he looked. Uh, uh, I watched his Cry at home. He looked on the ball. Nice. So it's very good. Nice. Um, but yeah, like I think, um, yeah, that day, like, but yeah, I think it died down a little bit, like, because I think again, there's that surge of energy when it's uh-huh. like, right, this is the situation, we're just going to deal with it, and get yeah. on with it, and then as time goes by, you go, oh, Chris, this is yeah. still the situation. You got to be consistent. And then when people that. people are starting to be able to train in person and stuff now, so the the camera is not necessarily on anymore, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But karate on the internet as a thing in general is a bit... It's a tricky subject because, uh, like, you can learn karate on the internet. We've proven that. You know, it's been proven over the last year and a bit. You can learn karate. You can be taught karate on the internet. You can do karate. Are they, yeah. are they learning, though? That's the question. Uh, yeah, come on. You've taught classes. You see people improving their technique. You see people learning what you're doing. Yeah. Over it's... Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a difference? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, of course, of course. Is there a difference between the people who came back like this week who've been training and who haven't been training? On the um, that's a good question. Uh, for children, yes. I think the ones who have been consistently training, um, de- I, I think just, just train harder in general. Like the ones that have been on Zoom just seem to get it. I know that, for example, I've got three kids who are all best buds actually but jk barry mm-hmm. uh, his son senin mm-hmm. uh, and his two best pals jack and saul saul was on zoom every day mm-hmm. and i would say saul, saul before lockdown was probably the the weakest of the bunch mm-hmm. um and he still has struggled with coordination in general and stuff like that but compared to the other two boys he he understands my mantras like my little sort of help uh, what's the words L- little, mnemonics yeah better like so when when we're doing kata he and mm-hmm. he understands like it's in his head more when i say same hand same leg turn this way block and the, and he knows okay exactly what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas some of the kids that are, are, will turn the wrong way or look the other way or change legs or, or whatever it is he has that down pat now because we've been doing it all the time on okay. zoom so nice. yeah that, I, i'd say that just that extra couple of months of training mm. Six months, however long it was, yeah, that made a difference that way. Um, just first one off the top of my head that I can think of. I've yeah. got two uh, fourth cues. One of them trained on Zoom all the time with her with her camera on. The other one trained all the time on Zoom with his camera off. Which one knows Techie Showdown down pat? The one who had her camera on. Yeah. The other guy, he wasn't. He was. I, I knew well he wasn't doing anything and I left him alone. I knew he was just switching it on because uh, uh, his parents made him go up to his room to do karate or something. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, the other I'd one... I'd say that was happening with schools and stuff as well. Yeah, like everything, say, I mean, yeah so you don't, you don't want to give them a hard time over it. But also, when it comes to comparing the kids that have been training and haven't, the ones who are turning up now having and having not seen me or I having not seen them since, uh, you know, possibly in over a year, but maybe just 
even if it's only if it was only through a computer screen, the kids I have been seeing and chatting to regularly, much more relaxed and comfortable and uh, you know happy to be back. And the kids who I haven't seen in so long, not on Zoom or not anywhere, they're a bit awkward. They're a bit like mm, shy and not really yeah. getting into it and yeah. kind of scared. So It'll keep keeping up the keeping up the contact, even if it just was online, has helped. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I would agree with that. How about you, Georgie? You're, you're one who's jumped in and out of Zoom. Do you notice a difference in the people who have been training on Zoom in um, and, and, and terms of the adults and the senior grades? I think, like, what you said, like, it's the same people that train hard that mm. sort of went to the Zooms. Um, I haven't been training in the last week, but... Yeah, I think that just the same people that were doing it. Maybe the some people are fitter than others and mm. feel a bit. Some people are quite stiff, like they're I, not really kicking. I think regardless, mm. the the fitness levels have all, yeah. with, with the exception of a couple, dropped drastically. Yeah, I think even on Zoom, it's hard to keep that maximum effort going. Yeah, yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, as soon as you're not looking at them, they can, you know, yeah. <laughs> they see yeah. you talking to somebody else, like you're giving somebody else feedback. They, but just, when you're in the dojo and the yeah. mirror's right there, yeah. you have to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone's looking at you. Everyone can see you. Yeah. Um, but the internet karate scene takes on the side, but just like people who post on social medias, YouTube, YouTube videos and stuff. I think um, everyone should do it. I think everybody who has a black belt should post clips of their training. Post so clips of training? all have a look. All have a look and yeah. see. So we can all compare ourselves to one another. <laughs> I think I think it yeah. should be it should be like a, you either, you either like, get a massive confidence boost, a massive confidence boost, or inspiration. Exactly, <laughs> because it's like um, it's like the way my dad talks about nuclear weapons. Now he's only you really joking. Right, he's a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's like he's like give everyone a nuke. Everyone. You have a nuclear bomb, Georgia. You have a nuclear bomb, Ross. I have a nuclear bomb. Everybody's got one. But I'm a psycho who's actually going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe this hasn't been that well thought through. But the, the point is, everybody has the power. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking this example out of the podcast. I <laughs> leave it. It's funny. It's funny. It's deep, it. man. It's deep. Right. I thought it would. I thought it would tie in, but it didn't. <laughs> um, the, the the thing I I find about it is that and what I notice when because I watch these like YouTube martial artists, mm -hmm. Sensei Seth, who you who you done a really nice episode with mm -hmm. on the podcast, um, Icy Mike, who's another big one, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, you know, professional fighter, but also very good YouTuber, mm -hmm. and a uh, Jesse Encamp as well, mm -hmm. and. What I find though is that they and Rokas obviously give Rokas shout who done an, the lovely interview with Scott the other day mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. got in contact with us before that just mm -hmm. to catch up. That's with stuff. the martial arts journey on YouTube. Martial arts right? journey, yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I find is that they always have to find the next video, the yeah. next bit of content, which means that they have to or. Straight yeah. to quote Sensei Scott. <laughs> to, That's oh, the word that Sensei Scott <laughs> made up. <laughs> to, to, they have to orchestrate these these talking points mm -hmm. to the point where it honestly infuriates me and I struggle to watch mm -hmm. them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's better with the likes of, for example, Icy Mike. I was going to say, who, yeah. Because he cause he's not really tied down to a style. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do karate. He does martial arts, broad spectrum. He can mm -hmm. and he can take a karate thing and talk about a karate thing. He can take a jiu-jitsu thing, and talk about a jiu-jitsu thing. He can take um, weapons training, self defense, whatever it is that he wants to talk about, and he mm -hmm. can do it. Therefore, his videos are always for me the the most interesting because mm -hmm. he has some broad spectrum to talk about. Whereas some of the other guys, like J Jesse Enkamp. Whose content is great, and Jess, Jess is a great martial artist. He's a great karate guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I, he had a, a Thai boxer. Oh yeah, on. this it was a terrible video, man. And, terrible. And, and 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 again, I get what he was trying to do, but I mean, he was. T I remember the the Thai boxer front kicked his his front leg, he teeped mm -hmm. in, in Thai boxing terms, teeped his front leg, 
And Jesse pause, pauses the video when he's there on screen. Did you see that? Did you see what he did? I have never experienced this before in my life. It's like, yes, you have, though. <laughs> so you have. Your brother's a professional MMA fighter. Yeah. You are sparring with him day in, day out. You're training in not just karate. You're training in everything. You trade like in a broad yeah. Don't protect. Don't bullshit us and tell us that it you've really not. It really did seem very bullshit. Like, like, yeah. and, and I would, like, and again, not to rip into Jesse Enker. I'm not saying Jesse Enker. Like, like I said, he's great. He is great. Mm. But it's those particular things that drive me up the wall with with, with the internet karate like personalities. Right. That so kind you're of saying thing. to get clicks, these guys are like they're, they're insincere. They have to, like you said, orchestrate or create these situations um, so that they can get something on film that's going to make people, that's going to give them a good headline, a good thumbnail, so that people will click on it so they can generate views. Yeah. Whereas I see Mike, now I know this because he put this thing up on Instagram where he put up like the first few minutes of filming um, where he didn't actually know what he wanted the video to be about. And he was like, oh, this is the thing with people who think they know about Mike Tyson. No, 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 wait. Okay, this is what people who want to be like Mike Tyson. No, no, no. Okay, the thing about Mike Tyson. No, 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 no. And he kept starting <laughs> again. And he was yeah. like, I just want to do something about Mike Tyson. And how about people, he's talking to his son who's yeah. behind the camera. And he's like, and about how they, you know, think that they can be like him. But I want to say about how he's unique or something like that. And then his son gives him an idea, like a new angle to go at it from. And that big fellow with the beard, yeah. who he's always with in the videos, he like helps him come up with another angle. So it's organic. Yeah. He starts, he just like flips the camera on and he's like, let's just do something. And yeah. in the end, he's got an idea. And then the title or the thumbnail comes afterwards when he's found his idea. But it's something organic. It's something that comes from what he's working on, what he's thinking about, rather than it's planned out beforehand. And you, yeah. so you can actually see it during his videos as well. Sometimes he's messing about and he does something and he's like, do you see what I just did there? Do you see what I just did <laughs> yeah, there? And yeah. then he's like, I'm going to talk about that now. Yeah. You know? I, so. I, I, and it's that, like, I'm, and, I, and again, I, I want to be clear, like, I don't, I get why they have to do the videos the way they do it, that's how they, they make their money or that's how they, they reach people or, and people enjoy their content. So I'm not saying that they shouldn't do it. I'm just saying me personally, I can't stand it. Can't enjoy it. Can't enjoy yeah. it. Mm -hmm. like, like to, to, to be a, as good a martial artist as Jesse Encap is and then pretend that he's never come across any of the techniques that he was coming across as this Mai Tai mm -hmm. um, former champion was thrown at him infuriates me. And then at the end, it's like, then we showed some of our techniques and like just with no partner and just showed some of the, our forms and obviously the Mai Tai guy's kicking through the target like even if there's no target he still kicks and makes a 360 spin when he kicks and he's like did you see that was he actually holding back during our sparring oh my god can you it's like <laughs> like the people watching don't know what full contact like sport combat like 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 combat sports are like, like yeah. I did fucking drove me. Like I was literally like. <laughs> and Jesse, but we know that Jesse knows he's bullshitting. That's the, that's the thing that annoys me. He has done MMA fights. He has fought. Yeah, like know? like yeah. he, he like, yeah, and he spars with like they, like they, they all teach the time that shit and, and, in his dojo. Yeah, There's it, MMA classes in like, his dojo. Yeah, and, he, and you see him hitting pads, full pelt and yeah. stuff. Like, and that, that and is that kind of like you're treating. It's like it's like he's treating like again taking it from a person. Yeah. He's treating me like an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like it. I can't, <laughs> I can't stand it. Man. Actually, I had the same ugh, tangent, but I had the same experience recently. Found a new podcaster, uh, and it, his show is brilliant. It's called Strong Songs, and it's uh, he he takes a song every week and he breaks it down and talks about why it's a great song. And he's always dead right. But he's always like explaining it in in such basic terms and it's just it's it's way too I when I'm listening to it and I'm like, this is for people who don't know anything about music. <laughs> that, the way I look at it is like you know He's clearly a musical genius, the guy himself, but yeah. yeah. It's like me going like, you know, to, to the beginner's class kids. Mm -hmm. Now you have to always look where you're punching and I'll take a kid and I'll bring him out mm -hmm. and I'll have the kid and I'll say, Don't move and I'll and I'll slowly like like touch his forehead with a punch, like slowly, mm -hmm. slowly. Then I'd be like, okay. Then I'd be like, now everyone, watch this. And I and I'll look away and look at them and talk to them while I'm punching and missing. I'll be like, don't move and wah, 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 don't move. And they're all giggling. Yeah, because yeah, you're punching messing. all over the place. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. why am I not hitting them? Because you're not looking at. Yep. If I look at them, bang, and I'll give them one in the forehead. Like, <laughs> 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 and, but the kids love that because they they don't know because. 
the first day, second day, like first time doing karate and mm-hmm, da da da. Mm-hmm. And, and and for me, their way of bring, putting across content is like that <laughs> two seasoned fucking martial artists who are watching this content, you know? Yeah. Like you're not going to watch his journey to fucking Okinawa if you don't if you're not invested in martial art already. You Maybe know. Maybe he's figured out that his audience actually isn't black belts. Maybe his audience, because I remember I would watch a lot of Jesse M Camp when I was a wee ball back. Yeah. AKA a wee brown belt. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the more I learned from you and Scott Sensei, the less I felt inclined to click on. Maybe it's just because I was watching more karate on YouTube in general. Uh, and yeah. then the more the more I got into training here, the less need I felt for looking at karate on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But it infuriates me. So uh, the, 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 the thing I like is, like, I, I see Mike, um, like I say, organic, and he, and he has a broad spectrum of things. But I think if... I would love to see a karate person out there that just that didn't have that motivation of mm. what's the next angle and just put stuff up. Scott? Scott does that. But, again, he doesn't it's have not as the many same subscribers, thing. Though, it? does he? It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing, is it? What do you mean it's not the same thing? Like, like, it's, like Scott's not a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that's it. Maybe to be a YouTuber, you have to constantly like, put a video out every day and it has to be... He's like 10,000 subscribers, I think? 12,000 subscribers, Scott which does? Is, really? Which is nothing compared to some of the... Yeah, the lads, J- Jesse you know? Ancamp's got over 100,000, I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but fair play to them anyway. Like I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, again, mo- uh, when they do a good video, it's a great video. Like when their t- content is great, it's when mm-hmm. they talk to you like you're a fucking idiot. That's when I go crazy. Like, yeah. Mm. Did you see that? <laughs> why is your do Why you- does your Jesse and Camp impression sound like Mark? <laughs> I was thinking that. I thought it was Mark at first. Mark sounds like everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Mark as a YouTuber. The birthplace of karate. <laughs> That's it. That's Did you see that? Was he holding back the whole time we were sparring? There we go. Oh now my you god. It's like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> we need to wrap up, guys. We need to go. Oh, well, do you, do you have a... <gasps> oh, I didn't even think about the fails, man. Jesus. Well, I've got one. So I'll, well, I'll you crack go on. First. You crack on. I'll crack on right? while you guys think. Have George, think. you have to have a wee fail this week as well. Um... My feel came uh, to me um, <laughs> in a dream. <laughs> in a dream. No. Um, we were in here doing a bit, doing a bit of a of maintenance in the no. dojo. <laughs> bit of maintenance in the dojo, and um, and sure enough, we're we're painting. Please give it a, a lick of paint, lick of paint for everyone coming back in. And um, me and AJ are on the dojo. Painting away, and we're talking away about Bitcoin and all this stuff. <laughs> you know, AJ chat, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitcoin or David Lynch movie? <laughs> One or the other. Do you listen to Tool? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty good. You, I, I'll send a link to you. You'll like it. <laughs> I was doing my AJ impression for some of my some of my students recently, and they all said it was rubbish. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. they said, he doesn't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But they anyway. all loved my Ross impression though. Ah, oh, jeez, don't know. <laughs> um, but we're painting away, and we get to the corner of the dojo, and AJ takes three steps back quickly. And I went, "You all right? You all right, mate? What's happening?" And uh, he goes, "Oh, Ross, do not look in corner." <laughs> <laughs> I went, "Oh well, no, I have to look in the corner, right? I have to look in the corner." And sure enough. This fucking tarantula, <laughs> oh, and, I, and a very you know, like, I am petrified of spiders. I can't handle a spider. I'll fight any man. I'll fight any man. <laughs> I'll wrestle a bear. I'll do any of the uh, spiders. Can't handle it, man. I can't do spiders. And uh, sure enough, massive spider in the corner. And I'm I'm talking huge. Mm, it was a big one. It and, was a big boy. And I remember I, I shouted, <laughs> I shouted, I went, Roo! <laughs> Roo! <laughs> Come here, it's a man, it's a man, it's a man, it's a man. And he came running and he went, Don't worry, Ross, I'll save you. And he came running, jogging, and everyone was like, 
And it was like, you're going to want a cup or something? It's like, no, I'll just pick it up and turn. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally turned around and ran. It was like, what? I came over thinking I'd be the big hero. Like, <laughs> ah, not at all. I'll just grab. Whoa! It was it? monstrous. <laughs> was like, this thing was literally looking at us and going, fuck off. <laughs> was <laughs> that like a chunky one? Oh, man, yeah. it was a huge he fucking. Had, like, he had biceps. The... Like, <laughs> he had eight biceps. Yeah. He was hitting the Makiwara. <laughs> 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 and, 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 but she, and you know, Scott there, you know, grabs a cup and he comes over and he's, and he's like, "Oh, you fucking good idiot! I'll take care of it." And he fucking and it wouldn't fit in the cup. That's how big it was. He went and put the glass over it, and it didn't fit. So he had to do a little bit of manoeuvring, tilted the glass up. But the thing's so big, it doesn't even fall to the bottom. It stays in the middle and starts to crawl back out. Stop. And he's, I mean, we're painting, and I've got a paint right. He comes over to me, and he's like, oh, it's going to crawl out, Ross, Ross. I'm like, yeah, get away. <laughs> and my arm is like going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> painted a big bit of paint off Scott's face, I didn't paint, you? I painted <laughs> Scott was a lovely shade of white, eggshell white. So when he comes in, he throws the spider, he comes in, he's like, Ross, what the fuck? <laughs> Adam painted head to toe because it came chasing out with a spider. Oh, not my bravest moment. <laughs> fail. fail, never fail. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that was a great fail, Ross. How am I going to follow <laughs> yeah, that up? <laughs> uh, always up to shenanigans. <laughs> isn't it? I'd love if there was cameras around. I think you could make a great reality show. Mm. I'm just saying. You We're talking about the... doing a dojo documentary, man. I think some of the stuff <laughs> would be that we don't even think about. Would like that would yeah. be fucking yeah. hilarious. Yeah. We need to make up drama, though. No, oh. not that kind of reality show. Not Jesus. the Kardashians <laughs> fucking keeping up with the, the um, dojo. Mm. <laughs> we are not fans of this type of television. If you if you are a fan of this <laughs> type of television. Hey, Rue walking in the door. Hey, Ross, how's it going? So Rue came in with such an attitude today. I don't know what the story is. <laughs> talking this about. Yeah, confessional room yeah, here. Confessional room like that. <laughs> oh, no, Oh I don't know what's God. God's problem is. <laughs> <laughs> he, could, he doesn't even develop any power. Like, why would I have to work on my YouTube? Actually, this would be classed as a skit. <laughs> <laughs> I, <would> be like... <laughs> I don't think I've got one. I've been a really good boy lately. No? I think I'm one of you. Give me a sing. I mean, just the usual stuff, you know. <laughs> getting stuff wrong. Not being able to do kumite. You know. Oh, how about this? Oh. That was kind of a basic one. So we were doing drills in the morning training, and it was, you know, somebody attacks, the other person block, block, counter, and I kind of gave Scott Sensei a bit of a thump. A bit of a, a bit more, you know, a tap is okay, but a bit of a thump. Uh, I was like, whoa, that was a bit of a thump. I wonder if he's going to be angry about that. And then he seemed fine for a while. But I was like, he keeps blocking my counters now. <laughs> Stop blocking my counters. You know, it's no fun if you you get to attack and then you just block my counter. And then it was his turn, uh, it was my turn to attack and his turn to counter. And it was fine, he was being a gentleman. You know, tap, tap, counter, tap, tap, counter. And then for the very last one, I don't know how he did it. If he can do this all the time, it's mad that he doesn't do it all the time. Because uh, he did the thing and I blocked and countered. And then he just did another one at like ten times the speed. And just dunk, dunked me right in the chin. Ooh. Made me feel like a little child. <laughs> <laughs> And that's up on Instagram if you want to see it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Made me feel like a buffoon. Just like, oh, put me in my place, you know? I thought I, I was good at this graphic. <laughs> yeah, you're like, ah, oh, he can hit me whenever he wants. Well, fuck. <laughs> Did he compare one of your moves to something? Oh, the wet willy. Yeah, he told me my Urama wash looked like a wet willy. <laughs> he was like, you got to get compression before you before you extend from the hip. Otherwise, you're just, you're just swinging it around like a... Like a wet willy. <laughs> <laughs> wet willy. That's the kind of sophisticated yeah. branches we have in morning training, folks. <laughs> Everybody else gets the detailed, you know, nuanced descriptions of technique. That's the instructors. Just... You're kicking like a wet willy. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia, go. I wasn't really training this week because I had exams. <laughs> to yeah. It doesn't one. have to be a fail um, of the week. It could be a of fail week. of the lockdown. The lockdown? Oh. So I was in my room one day and it was like five minutes before Just the class. in Galway. Yeah, so I was in Galway on Zoom. For one of the few times I did it. And I'd just come in and all my stuff was everywhere because I'm quite a messy person. 
and I just throw it under the sheets and do my bed up all nice. You know, I have a lot of pillows. Oh, because Scott would be, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm with you. And then Scott calls me out in front of the whole class. This was when you guys were on the dojo and there was only like three of us on Zoom and everyone just looks up at the screen and Scott makes me tidy my whole room. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's fine if it's outdoors or everyone's on Zoom. No, I just see everyone just like... <laughs> staring at me. Some people going... <laughs> Scrolling through. Yeah. Who's this Georgia person? Oh, her room is quite nice. <laughs> like the whole class stopped. Very messy room. And I, I just, it was so like I don't. I just felt so violated in my own home. <laughs> like, and everyone was so ashamed. Georgia, make your bed. <laughs> I, I don't even know that. how he saw it. You should have just went. <laughs> <laughs> Giving him one of those. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't do that. You that's a good that. feel. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, folks, uh, this is us. We're back. We're back in full swing. Oh, yeah. Full swing. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Deep bows and hoo. Oh, it's <laughs>